Hi folks, Toad here with VisorDown.com and I am somewhere in the woods in the Midlands proving that working in the motorcycle industry is not all glamour. And why am I stood in a muddy wood in the rain recording a piece to camera? Well, this is the reason. Honda's 2019 CB500X. So if you're paying attention, which I hope you were, you'll have seen that we did a quick review on this bike the other day. Did sort of a first impressions video after mainly riding off-road um, after the journey back from Corby after I collected it. If you missed that video, please click like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all of Isdown.com's latest videos on YouTube. So what else have we done with the CB500X? Well, I haven't done any more off-road riding despite where I'm stood. I just came here because it's fairly quiet. Um, but what I have done is a lot more motorway miles on this thing, uh, just to kind of fill out the review and to make it as thorough as possible. So before I go into the review proper, here's a little high level overview of the bike. So this is 6,199 quid, which is uh, works out around about 99 pounds on a PCP deal. Um, go down to your local Honda dealer and there are probably deals to be had because I have a feeling in a year or so, they're probably gonna give this thing a little bit of an update. What is it? Well, it's a learner, uh, sorry, an A2 legal or an A2 friendly adventure, touring, commuting, bit of a do it all bike really. Uh, pushes out about 47 brake horsepower and it's got 43 newton meters or 31 pound foot of torque. Uh, the power comes in at 8,500 RPM and the torque comes in at about 6,500 RPM. This bike has got a couple of additions to it. It has got the top box, which is a Honda accessory. And I've also been told by the man at Honda, it's got a slightly different screen. Although I've looked at the pictures of the CB500X online and it looks like the same screen that they all have. So take that with a pinch of salt. So before we go any further, let's have a look at the engine of this thing. So yes, it is the same parallel twin uh, 500cc unit that is also in the CB500, uh, sorry, CBR500R sports bike and also the CB500F naked and commuter bike. It is a very busy little unit. It's not the most powerful or the torquiest of the 500s or the A2 licensed bikes out there in terms of it makes a, an A2 compliant amount of power, but it doesn't have the urgency of something like the Kawasaki uh, Z650, which is also A2 compliant, which has got a bit more bottom end and a little bit more mid range. What it does have though, is a really, really chirpy little character to it. It's a really fun engine. And I found out exactly the same thing when I rode the CBR 500R a couple of years ago, that it just kind of always eggs you on. And it's a nice, usable, friendly enough unit that you can ride it if you're experienced and riding bigger bikes, or if you're moving up from the learner legal ranks on a 125, for instance, you can hop on this thing and it's gonna feel quick. It's gonna be the quickest thing you've ever ridden most likely, but it's not gonna alienate, alienate you and it's not gonna intimidate you in any way. It's a very accessible and easy to get on with engine. Um, one of the really, really good points about this engine, and I've banged on about it in the first review as well, is the economy of it. You can get fantastic fuel economy from this bike. Um, if you sit at 75 on the motorway, you will be getting between 70 and 78 miles per gallon, which is bloody good. And if you're riding around town and you're trickling around in, in uh, you know, fifth or sixth gear, you'll be getting over 100 miles per gallon, which is absolutely fantastic. The tank on it is about 17 litres, so you have got well over 200 miles capable in that tank. And it's, it kind of takes the range anxiety out of it, knowing that you can do 200 miles easily and still have quite a bit left in reserve. It's a really, really good feature of the bike and something that I get on with quite a lot. I think I've only actually filled it up once in the 250 or 275 miles that I've been riding the thing, which is which is pretty damn good. Just while we're talking about the engine, I want to talk about the throttle of this thing because it is a cable operated throttle. It is not an electronic throttle that would put the bike out of the price range that would make it as competitive as it is. And it is a little bit snatchy. In the first initial opening of the throttle, it does tend to jerk onto the power quite a bit. And I had my um, other half on the back of this thing and we did clatter helmets a couple of times. It's something that you can work around and the longer you ride it, the less of an issue it is. But in a couple of scenarios, especially riding around town and also riding off road on the surfaces that you can see around me, you do just have to be really, really gradual in that first opening of the throttle. It is kind of ex exaggerated if you want, because this bike has got very, very short 
closely spaced gears, especially the first three. Man, it's pissing it down. And because of those really short and closely spaced ratios in the first part of the box, it kind of accentuates the problem. One of the ways that I found to combat it was either just to feed the power in with the clutch as well as the throttle, or just ride around and pull away in second. And when you're riding around slowly, just use third gear. And it kind of dulls the torque and the power down a bit and makes it a much more easy to manage ride. While we're talking about riding around town, another benefit of this bike is the clutch is extremely light, like one finger light on the clutch. It's perfect for a town rider. You don't get any fatigue in your wrist the gear change is very good as well it's, it's a nice feeling positive gearbox where you get a really really audible snick as you go up into the next gear the only thing that i will say is if you are riding this in anything other than road riding boots like i've got my big clod hopper adventure boots on the gap between the peg and the gear lever is quite small so you have to kind of really hook your foot under the lever to snick it into the next gear it's not a massive issue but it's just something to bear in mind so I'm going to talk about the chassis of this thing, which is the suspension frame and brakes. So starting off with the suspension, we've got 41 millimeter telescopic forks with preload adjustability. And we have got a ProLink rear shock absorber, again, with five stage preload adjustability. That is all that you've got on the bike. So I will say from the start, it is quite softly sprung. You can dial some of that out with the preload but then you're not rectifying anything with the rebound damping or compression damping so it will always kind of feel a little bit wobbly for want of a better phrase it doesn't really impede your progress um, and i would say for this bike if you were going to ride it on road and do a bit of commuting on it and then you wanted to ride the occasional green lane as well it's probably about as good a mix as you can get between those two sort of riding disciplines um, it does work quite well. It only really starts to feel the limit when you push on uh, and if you're sort of hammering it into corners a bit too quickly, it starts to complain and sort of tie itself in knots. I will say that the chassis is really, really nicely balanced and it's got a nice sort of poise to it, apart from the slightly wallowy sensation that you get when you're riding it. But I mean, I've taken this bike probably to more extreme lengths than most CB500 riders will take their bike to, including getting some air on a, a little off-road sort of track that I know of not far from my house. And one of the great things about that was when we landed from the, the small jumps that I was doing, it was like falling onto your grandmother's bed. It was so soft and so plush and so comfortable. And it also didn't bottom out underneath the engine. So there's plenty of ground clearance and it's not so soft that you're gonna hammer into the bump stops if you do have to make some evasive maneuvers. So equipment wise, as you'd expect, because it's got the CBR500R engine and the CB500F engine, we've got exactly the same reverse LCD dash uh, that is shared across that range of bikes. It's um, very well laid out and it's quite clear, although in certain light, i.e. direct sunlight, it can be a little bit tricky to read. That said, it's got all of the information in there that you would need, uh, things like your average MPG, constant MPG, uh, a couple of trip meters and so on and so forth. Um, but there are no controls for the dash on the handlebar. They're all mounted actually on the dash, two little buttons, which is a bit of a fiddle to flick through them while you're riding along. It would be nice to have something on the handlebar um, as well. So this bike is about as, as stripped back as you can get in the adventure bike sector. So it has got no traction control. It has got two channel ABS, which is a little bit ag agricultural, but you can't turn that off unless you're gonna go remo removing fuses, which isn't advisable. You've got no riding modes, you've got no throttle maps, you've got none of that stuff. And I actually think that's great because it means when you come to somewhere like this, you can just ride the bike that's under you. You don't have to go through changing settings and changing riding modes and doing all of that and faffing about. It's quite nice to roll off a trail and not to sit there for 10 minutes going through all the menus and trying to change the engine modes over so that you get the same a, a, an as nice ride on the way home. I would say to sum up the equipment of it, it is refreshingly free of complication, which is quite a good thing in the motorcycle industry because everything is getting so complex it's just nice to get on something and just ride it without having to faff about so we're going to go through what we like about the honda cb 500x i really really like the fact that it is good value budget adventure touring and it doesn't get more good value or adventure touring than this you can do it all on it you just have to understand the motorcycle's limitations it's got a really, really robust design. This bike is not a new bike, the one that I'm actually riding. This would have probably come onto that Honda press fleet in about the end of 2018, start of 2019. It's got about 4,000 miles on the clock, um, which is quite well used for a press bike. They generally only get a couple of thousand miles on them, but it's obviously been quite popular. 
Um, but with that, that extra mileage, it's worn it really, really well. There's no kind of uh, fatigue on any of the metal. There's no corrosion on any aluminium parts and the stainless steel fittings are all in pretty good shape. So it looks like it's gonna be robust. It looks like it's gonna be able to handle a winter or two. And if you're looking at something that you can just commute on without having to worry about maintaining it, I'd say it's a pretty safe bet. Another thing that I love about this bike is the economy. Uh, the, the, MPG this thing can return if you take it easy is absolutely stunning and even when you hammer it because the engine is so frugal and it just sips fuel it still isn't returning bad MPG um, so that's, if you're looking for cheap convenient uh, commuter transport there is it's a really really good bet and the final thing that I like about the bike is the comfort the seat on this thing is extremely plush it's nicely contoured and it's a really good size the pillion perch as well is very very comfortable my other half will attest to that and it's not just the seat the pegs are nicely set it's nicely positioned you feel relaxed when you're riding it it's just a nice place to be you've got these massive bar risers that come out of the top yoke that kind of send the, uh, the handlebars up to greet you but you don't feel crowded and the cockpit doesn't feel cluttered it just feels like a place where you can just get on with the act of just riding a bike and not having to worry about all those other things so what don't we like about the Honda CB500X? Um, I tell you, this is completely honest, at motorway speeds, so 75 or above, you do get a bit of a buzz through the bars and also the pegs, to the point that if you spend too much time at those sort of speeds, you will get off and you'll sort of feel the pins and, uh, pins and needles tingling in your fingertips. Um, it is a small engine. Um, I think it could probably benefit from some, maybe some rubber damps um, in there just to try and quieten that vibe down a little bit. But it just becomes an issue if you're spending a long time on the motorway at sort of, like I said, 75 or above. Uh, the other thing that has become a little bit of an issue, and it's not really the fault of the bike, it's the fault that the bike is so light and so agile, yet it has a full-sized adventure bike profile. It does pick up a crosswind quite a bit. On the way back from London coming down the M40, just as you're coming down the Chiltern Hills, there's that section that leads up to the turn-off for Oxford, and you always get crosswinds there, and it does pick them up. You do feel those crosswinds more than you would on a bigger and heavier adventure bike. Like I said, it's kind of, it's a positive and a negative. It's a negative because you feel the crosswinds, but actually because you're feeling them, it's because the thing is so light and because it has got that full-size bike appearance to it. And the other thing, the final thing that I did have a little bit of an issue with on this road test was the slightly, slightly snatchy throttle. Some gear. I mean, this, this class of adventure bikes is a really burgeoning sector at the moment. We've got bikes like the KTM 490 Adventure, you've already got the Kawasaki uh, Versus 300, uh, the Suzuki, they've got the little baby V-Strom as well. And it's all kind of, they're all vying for position. They're all really competitively priced, albeit the KTM is more expensive. It's probably more focused for off-road riding, this sort of stuff. Um, and the Kawasaki is slightly cheaper, but then again, it's slightly less powerful and probably less inclined to go off-road or less inclined to cruise on the motorway. I'd say if you're looking for something that's a good mix of adventure, touring, commuting, um, and just general enjoyment and pleasure riding, you can't really go wrong with the Honda. It's such good value and the economy and the insurance and the servicing is all gonna be so good. There's really not a lot not to like. Folks, if you like that video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all of Visor Down's latest videos. For all the latest news, reviews and motorcycle features, please head over to visordown.com. Thanks, folks.